and amen. Well, uh, thank you again this morning for uh, being here on this uh, special, special day of Vision Day uh, for our church. 2023 uh, was a really a remarkable year. Oh, by the way, let me say this. I know it's cold in here. I, I, I understand. I, see, I know you guys are all bundled up, and uh, some of you are going, I, I know. Our, our, our rigs, what's them things called? Heaters. Yeah. <clears throat> They're working. They're just not working like you want them to. Amen. Okay. And so if, if you think it's too cold in here, run outside real quick. Come back in. Amen. It'll, it's, it's all perspective. Okay. And so if you will smile, give a little energy, it warms up. Amen. But the colder you look, the longer it goes. That's just how it goes. Amen. So it's going to be a good, good morning. All right. Uh, great, great year. God just really blessed us in 23. And uh, what I want to do uh, before I look at a passage of scripture with you, I want to take you on just a little bit of a journey and share with you some of the things. Uh, key word there is some. There's no way we could have time this morning to deal, deal with all. But some of the things that we got to see in 23 uh, in a few of our ministries that God really uh, blessed us in. Our children's ministry had an incredible year. Uh, children's ministry is uh, one of those things that I hear over and over and over uh, from folks as they come, how blessed they are to have their kiddos in there, um, that their kids are loving what they're experiencing on Sunday. And the facts are, uh, if they're not happy, then mom and daddy ain't happy. Amen. That's just how it goes. Uh, but this last year, we were really blessed uh, in there and continue to be blessed by Miss LaDonna. Uh, she is now in her 75th year as our <laughs> children's minister. Now, she's been here a long time with us. She is effectively our longest serving staff member. Uh, and I believe she's on year 21 or 22 in that range. Amen. Um, and so... Uh, you be sure whenever you see her uh, to hug her neck and uh, thank her uh, for the incredible work she continues to do. Speak in her good ear uh, so she can hear. I'm teasing. I just see if you were awake. Um, but she gave me some, just a report that I think is just really, really awesome. Uh, we went to Cross Timbers this last year to uh, Grand Lake, which was our last year to go to that particular camp. We had eight adults go, 25 children, had two kiddos uh, give their life to Christ while we were there at camp uh, this last week. Amen. Of last week, this last summer. Uh, Vacation Bible School, uh, we had 110 children enrolled and listen to this, 75 workers uh, each evening and had nine kiddos saved uh, that week and had a 254 attended our VBS celebration at the water park. If you've never been to Vacation Bible School uh, here, it's worth your trip. Come up and just watch the army of volunteers that show up uh, to pull that thing off. And they are uh, just remarkable people. And so it was a blessed, blessed week for Vacation Bible School. We are in our 18th year of Awana uh, on Wednesday nights. We have 32 different adults that are leading 120 plus children uh, each week. And uh, it really is, I think, the, the, the premier children's uh, ministry emphasis uh, in the nation with teaching kids the uh, the importance of scripture memorization, hiding thy word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It also, if you've not come to one of their awards banquets that they do in May, you need to come uh, and you're going to go home with your mouth gaping open going, I did not know uh, that anybody could memorize that much scripture, but they do. Uh, and just really, really great uh, way of, of uh, putting scripture to memory. Our adults teach them each week. Trunk or treat, we had some challenges. Um, uh, and, and by the way, th just so you understand, we're going to talk about some challenges today. Um, this is not just a glossy picture of uh, our life is, is just, you know, uh, 
peanut butter and jelly. That'd be grand, but it's not. It's, life is challenging and life is hard. So we're going to celebrate some things, but I'm also going to talk to you about some of the challenges we had. One of those happened with Trunk or Treat. We've been doing that a long time uh, up in the city of Tahlequah at Norse Park. And um, that only happens, again, because of your generosity buying um, uh, out every Walmart in the uh, tri-state area uh, of their candy. And so we literally had thousands upon thousands of pieces of candy ready to go, ready to pull the trigger for the event. And the day before, and maybe it was the day of, we had to pull the trigger uh, to say, no, we can't do the event because of weather. And so my group and I got together and we made a decision that we prayed you would be good with. There was no way to get us all together to make that choice. Uh, but that decision was that we would give that candy away that you went and bought to, for us to give out. We were able to take that and bless our other area churches that had their event two days later on a night in which it wasn't raining. Now, I know you're like, well, why didn't we do that? Well, we don't predict the weather, that's why. And uh, so in that, we gave it away, blessed those churches. And matter of fact, the majority of them we gave it to, we gave them more candy than what they had to begin with. That's how much candy uh, we're talking. So there's an enormous amount of candy. And I had maybe one of my top, at least three proudest moments, for lack of a better term, as your pastor that following Sunday. Because I didn't know how you're going to respond. I just didn't. I had a suspicion you would do well with it, but I didn't know. And I told you what we had done. And you know what? You, you don't remember this. I remember it. You stood up and cheered. You stood up and applauded because what we understand is it's not about us. It's not about folks knowing about Crescent Valley. It's about folks knowing about Jesus and his kingdom expanding and not ours. And so thank you for being the people you are that are a kingdom-minded people and willing to give your candy away. Uh, we had eight children baptized in 2023. Uh, kids worship. Yeah, you can clap for that. You should. Our kids worship, which is our K through five, uh, has an average attendance of 50 kiddos uh, each week. Small group attendance with the kiddos uh, was up to 70 students each week. And uh, they, they really have a great time. They're meeting over there, matter of fact, right now uh, as we speak. Uh, coming up this summer is our Vacation Bible School. Save the date. You don't have to write that down. We're going to get it to you, but I wanted to tell you, uh, June 9th through the 13th, and we have a uh, theme that says here is scuba. Okay, so we're going to be scuba -ing. Scubing? Is it scubing or scuba-ing? Scuba. It just says scuba. I don't ask questions. This is scuba, okay? So we're going to be scubing. We're scubing. We're scubing. I, I'm up here talking and we're scubing, okay? Amen. That's what we're going to do. We have a brand new location. We're excited about this. We've got a brand new location for our children's camp uh, this coming summer. Uh, we've been in a number of those over the years and primarily because the, the camp owners change hands or, uh, something with the contract goes different. And so, uh, this was the last year that we were up in Grove this year, uh, coming up the 10th through the 13th of July, we're going to be at green country camp, which is up in Disney, Oklahoma. Some of y'all know where that is. And uh, so we're excited about that and be sure and uh, make plans if you've got kiddos in that age group uh, to uh, get them signed up whenever that time uh, comes. So anyway, great, great uh, year behind us in children's ministry and man, looking forward to the good things ahead. Our student ministry had also a, a great new year of last year um, as they donated over 50 coats uh, to the Tahlequah Day Center uh, through their coat drive last January. Uh, we deployed 25 missionaries during Serve Week into our community to serve uh, uh, the community and also to share the gospel. Our Serve Week has become just one of those 
uh, staples of the ministry here uh, of this church, in particular our student ministry, been going on a long time, but God every year seems to show up and really stretch us, but also bless us uh, in that ministry. And so Pastor Seth did a great job uh, in leading that group. They did a campaign this last year called Launch 23. Uh, Through this campaign, we had nine baptisms, 14 salvations, 118 gospel conversations. Now listen to this, and 85 brand new guests in 2023 through that campaign. That's remarkable, amen? We took 125 uh, students to camp at Falls Creek this last year as we had partnered again with New Community and had four different decisions of a call to ministry and three salvations at Falls Creek uh, this past summer. We had our St. Louis mission. You can go ahead and clap. Buddy, you're faithful. Thank you down here. Somebody's got to be first in stardom. You're doing a good job. St. Louis mission trip, we've been a number of years, as many of you know, because many of you have gone. Uh, We continue to go and do our work there uh, with our partner churches in East St. Louis. We uh, deployed 14 missionaries up there this year, had five different salvations, and were able to minister uh, to over 50 kids uh, and students uh, throughout that week. And let me just pause there to say thank you for your investment uh, in that particular work. It is making a difference, even to the point, and I don't know if we've talked about this, but even to the point that one of the churches that we were working with for a number of years, no longer are we working there. And I'm going to tell you why. They don't need us now. Uh, They just didn't have much at all going on in student ministry. We began that work uh, several years ago. And I I want to say maybe it was four or five years we went and uh, spent the week with them putting on a VBS, and now that group shows up and does the VBS themselves uh, and is serving along with us in other areas uh, throughout that week, which I think is a really, really cool thing, seeing that growth in them. Um, And they're a larger church, but they just didn't have anything going on in regards to the student ministry. And so that's been pretty cool to see uh, through the years. Uh, We had our see you after the poll. Uh, rally. We had over 400 students uh, this year and had six uh, decisions for Christ uh, on that night. Amen. This past year, we also in our student ministry had launched uh, our D groups, which is our advanced discipleship group. They uh, meet for a designated period of time uh, with that whole idea that I want to accelerate my growth in my relationship with Christ. And so uh, they've done that, now getting ready for uh, this brand new year and and excited about what they have coming up. They're going to have their launch 24 campaign, also planning to be back in St. Louis Again, uh, as well as some uh, that have and some that are uh, planning to accompany us in our work over in uh, West Africa. And so uh, just excited about what God is doing uh, through Pastor Seth's uh, a ministry there. If you've not got to hear uh, him preach on Wednesday nights, I'd encourage any of you to pop your head in and listen to him over there. Uh, he's not terrible. He's Amen. No, he's doing a great job. Uh, I told him a couple weeks ago, I got to uh, sit in while we don't have campus church going on right now, got to sit in and listen to him preach. And he did as good a job as I've ever heard him do uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, just, man, really, really uh, preaching the paint off the walls. And so we're excited about how God's using him. Uh, Our music ministry has undergone, and you know this because you see it, uh, a lot of change over this last year. They've added a lot of new faces, uh, primarily because uh, Morgan graduated all the rest of the band off, and they're in college now. And so they scattered. And man, what a blessing those guys were uh, to us and and how they had served uh, so faithfully during high school. Uh, But man, what a blessing that how God... It's always amazing to me how God knows what you need, who you need, and he knows when you need them. 
And so just as these guys are transitioning out, uh, these guys that you're, and gals that you're seeing now in our band, uh, many of them kind of was transitioning in, saw the need, and uh, have worked with Pastor Shane and joined us. And so I'm so grateful for them and how they serve every week uh, and doing just a really a great job. Also, want to just give a shout out for those that are serving. We've got a lot of new faces on our tech team. And, and tech teams are kind of one of those thankless jobs in the life of a church. Nobody ever looks at you until you mess up. That's just how it goes, right? As long as everything sounds good in here, nobody looks back there. But boy, the moment that a noise comes across, it's like you give him that, you know what, that like your mom's fitting to end your life look. And uh, so thank you to all of those of you that are in the booth, those on the cameras, those that are up there in the third heaven. That That's what I that's what I call that up there. It's, it's not really the actual third heaven, but that's what I call it. So anyway, I think there's people up there that do things. And, uh, and so we're grateful. We're so grateful for all the work that they do. They're the ones that help us to be online. Uh, for those that you're watching now, y'all ought to give a shout out to your tech folks because they are taking good care of you. Um, uh, this last year, we took 11 people uh, over on our uh, annual trip to West Africa in the country of Ghana. Uh, four of those, uh, 11, uh, were from our sister church over in Russellville, Arkansas at Second Baptist Church. Pastor Chris Russell was one of those and joined us and are planning to go back again. Had two of them that joined us from our uh, city campus. And um, so we're excited about that. We've got the dates set already. Uh, for this next summer as we go. If you're interested in being part of that, you can find the sign-up sheet out here um, in the lobby. Now, I told you we are talking about good things today, but we're also going to talk about some hard things, some challenging things. And we had one of those uh, in 23 in the area of church planting. Um, back in October, late October, uh, I had been informed uh, from Pastor Ben. Many of you will remember Pastor Ben and his sweet wife, Miss Brittany, uh, that we had launched them out uh, to Cincinnati here about four years ago uh, to plant a church uh, that wound up being Inspiring Hope Church uh, there in the city of Cincinnati. Uh, they uh, spent about a year in uh, a residency program there with another church and then uh, launched out and planted the church. Um, this last fall, not late October, I got word from Pastor Ben that they had really, um, they'd hit a wall um, and a, a wall that they were having a really hard time seeing any way through or around in a, a healthy way. And so really felt like they needed to take time to kind of push back and spend time in prayer and, and, and seeking the Lord's direction about what is next. They'd had a lot of uh, leadership change and leadership loss and, 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 and much of it due to just God was opening doors. Uh, some of his leaders that uh, were serving there each week, uh, one had, you know, uh, hey, God's opened a door for uh, this particular job, maybe in Baltimore or wherever, and we're moving our family up there. And so it wasn't necessarily bad things. It just that they they left and um, it really had put him in a, in a spot where he was having a hard time seeing a way forward. And so at the end of that um, time of seeking the Lord, uh, they made the decision that they just did not see a way forward and uh, made the decision to um, uh, close the doors of the church. And so Inspiring Hope no longer will exist um, as a church there in the city of Cincinnati. Now, this will bring up questions for you, just like it did me. Uh, you know, what happened and all of that. And, and, and a lot of that kind of stuff is, is going to take time for us to sort through. And, 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 and how do we, because part of me is, uh, number one, I still believe in church planning. I still believe that's the greatest way for us to reach the, 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 the majority of people across our nation. However, uh, we don't want to, if mistakes are made, we don't want to repeat mistakes, right? Uh, we want to learn from them. And so that's part of what we will do uh, moving forward forward as far as looking in, is there things that we could have done different, 
things that we could have done better. And uh, sometimes circumstances just hit hard and uh, they're a challenge for us. And so um, am I disappointed? Absolutely, I'm disappointed. Uh, nobody goes and plants a church and going, ah, I'll give it three or four years and, and it'll be done. We just don't do that. Um, however, I'm still thankful and I'm glad we went and gave it a shot. Amen? I, I am. Why? Because a number of people were saved because of it. That's why. Um, but yet at the same time, it's hard news. It's, it's, it's a challenge. It's, it's, it's a reminder to me that ministry is hard um, I don't care where you are, whether it's in an established church or a church plant or Atlanta, Georgia, or the Pacific Northwest, uh, ministry is tough. Anybody that tells you that it's not is somebody that I'll tell you has not been in ministry. Not long. Um, it's hard. Why? Because life's hard. Because people are hard to deal with. At Am I telling something wrong? Anybody in here that deals with people, uh, it, you find that it's hard to deal with. And can I tell you why people are hard to deal with? Because you're hard to deal with. And I'm hard to deal with. Am I telling the right? We're hard to deal with. And so life happens, and it just it's a challenge. And so um, I tell you all that, number one, because I want to be transparent. Whenever we sent the Mangrums to Cincinnati, our whole church participated in that. It was a big deal to us. And um, this is a big deal to all of us now. And so, and yes, on one side, I'm, I'm grieving. I'm grieving over the closure of that church. Uh, on the other side, I'm, I'm hopeful and I'm excited about, okay, well, Lord, what's next? What do we do? And, uh, and so that's, I don't have the answer to that, by the way. That's why now we pray. We pray for that, that next step in church planning. But I'll also just implore you, pray for the Mangrams. Pray for them as they continue to pursue uh, the call of God on their life, pursue the will of the Lord uh, for their family, uh, that God would speak clearly for them and they would uh, obey. Now, I, that, and that's all I'm going to say about that for now. If you want more details or you want to talk more, I'm available to you, okay? Uh, you can come see me anytime you want to, even after the service, and we can talk. But I, that's, that's what we'll, we'll say for uh, right now. Um, I want you to continue to be praying for our missionaries that are in uh, the Czech Republic. You'll remember about that same time uh, we launched out the Shaddix family, uh, Stephen and Kelly and Casey and Selah. Uh, if you're not on their newsletter, um, we can get you connected with that. Uh, they send that out, I know, at least once a month, and God just continues uh, to bless their efforts there in uh, learning the language. That's kind of the first step of getting there. And as I suspected, he would uh, disagree with this, Stevie's fluent. I think he probably was that first week. Um, it just kind of makes me sick that he learns things that quick, but he does. And um, But I, I'm, I'm just heartened every time I read uh, of how God's just blessing their ministry there in the Czech Republic. But pray for them. Uh, continue to support them. There's uh, ways that you can do that financially, ways that you can be a part of the prayer team there. Uh, come see me if you're interested uh, in that. I want to give you a few numbers, and then we're going to read our, our passage of Scripture and, and then get you all home uh, before the white stuff falls. We hit a milestone uh, this year that, that we have not as a church uh, hit before. With our uh, combined offerings of both of our city campus and our main campus brought in over a million dollars in this last year, which is a pretty remarkable deal for us. Um, our, our total offerings given, our tithes and offerings uh, here at main campus uh, exceeded 780,000. At city campus, it exceeded 150,000. Uh, we had a missions offering for our Lottie Moon uh, Christmas offering, which by the way, you still can give to through this month. Um, we had a, a, a goal of 3,000 here at Maine, 1,000 over at City, and uh, you all got way too excited and went way past that. And our, our current total is sitting at $11,800, which is pretty, pretty awesome. We brought in, we have an Annie Armstrong missions offering in the 
uh, spring, which goes, the, the Lottie Moon all goes to international missions. Annie Armstrong all stays here within the United States through uh, North American Mission Board, brought in $1,190 uh, for that. And then you contributed over $10,000 uh, this past year to Pastor's Roundtable. And that's not including all of the gift cards you bought, uh, the guns you bought, the the grills you bought, the the bullets you bought, and the cans of chili you bought. We had two cans of chili we gave away, amen. And, uh, and, and just the man stuff. And so again, I just, I, I, I look at that, here we are, you know, six years into it, and I'm just, I'm, I'm amazed at what you've been able to do there with that. 24 salvations, 42 baptisms, 31 that have come uh, by way of members through our membership process. Small group numbers are up from the year previous from 226 to 281 and worship service numbers previous year 375 up to average of 443. Remarkable, remarkable stuff and to God be the glory. Um, let me end it with this, uh, telling you about your city campus. They continue to see God doing great things there. They had 14 new members added uh, with a year-long average attendance of 74 each week, averaging uh, 86 from school starting back up until Thanksgiving. They hit for the first time 100 uh, in service this last fall, had a 26% increase uh, in attendance. Campus church averaged 62 uh, with a weekly ministry footprint of 140 people, starting from literally nothing. And uh, God just is blessing. Six baptisms uh, this last year. They budgeted $92,360. They too got it too excited and brought in uh, 164000 uh, and, and, and so a 55% increase from the year before. You say, well, man, why all these numbers? Why all this? And I'll tell you why. Because it's, it's a picture of what, how God has continued to stir the hearts of his people and grow uh, his church and, and really to expand his kingdom. They partnered with our main campus and our coat drive was a, a leading part of that. They hosted three different mission teams from Oklahoma, North Carolina, and, and Missouri. Sent two people with us, as I told you, to West Africa. They partnered with uh, Grandview Schools there nearby, uh, given 125 uh, backpacks. Uh, then they did some uh, Thanksgiving uh, meals and baskets, uh, Christmas gifts, restocked uh, toiletry items there uh, for them as well, and got unbelievable plans coming in. All this to say, man, hadn't God been good to Crescent Valley Baptist Church? He has been good. It was, was there hard moments? You better believe it. Some stuff that just... It's just like with the church plant. That was a punch in my gut. And I hate it. I hate that it happened. I hate that anything like that happens. However, God's been good to us. He's been faithful. Well, if that be true, and the Bible says that he is constant and he changes not, we can look at this brand new year and say, God's going to be faithful, Miss Jan. As he has been, he will be. And uh, I'm excited about it. Let me, let me share this with you. And I'm going to do this in five minutes or less. Y'all okay? You ready? I got two minutes left till I'm in the red. All right. I'm doing this in five minutes or less. I said seven the other night whenever I did it. And I did every bit of those seven, maybe with seven more, but I'm going to do five minutes this morning. Acts chapter one. I'm going to just read the text, and I'm going to tell you what, what I'm there. I'm just going to give you an outline. I ain't going to preach. I'm just going to give it to you. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles, whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together and had asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to, to Israel? 
He said to them, it's not for you to know the times nor the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now my five minutes starts now, not before I read the text. Let me tell you what we're going to talk about throughout this year. I'm not talking about a, a sermon series that I'm going to preach. I mean, that, that could come. That's not what I'm, I'm talking. I, I'm talking about just something that the Lord is stirring my heart about over these last number of months coming in, and that is this, the power of God. The power of God. You, you do understand the power of God is an unmatched, unharnessed power. We all agree there on that? Unmatched, unharnessed. In other words, it's a greater power than any power that's ever been experienced. Now, let me tell you where my concern comes in. My concern comes in is that we never get to a place to where we get so good, listen to me, so good at church that we no longer are desperate for his power. And by the way, that's happening all over the place. We can get good at church. And by the way, we're good at it. You say, what do you mean good at church? Man, everybody does their thing. Everybody shows up and I've got this job, I've got that job. I sing here, I play that, I teach this and we can do, listen to me, you can do all that without the power of God on your life and we'll still go home going, boy, it was good church today, wasn't it? Why? Because we can get good at church. But here's what I know, here's what I'm convicted of. We can be so good at church, do it all without the power of God, which by the way, translate that in the flesh, and yet we won't move the needle for the kingdom of God one degree. It's got to be about expanding the kingdom. It's got to be about seeing souls saved. It's got to be about transformation rather than the transfer of information. In our text, he gives us only just point three things here to you. Three, I think, just observations. One, how he provides the power it's in verses one through three, and it's all about the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus is what provides the power. We get that, right? Without the resurrection, there's no power for us to be had. And he talks about that, how these indelible proofs, these, these proofs that, that, that they can't be argued. Why? Over 500 people saw the risen Christ at one time. 40 days he walked and, and, and slept and ate and dined with them. They touched him. The second is this promise of the power. He's not dangling the power out over heaven and saying, oh, you can't have it. No, no, he wants us to walk in the power. But there's something that's key component for you and I to experience it. You know what it is? Obedience obedience. He told them because they wanted it Let's, now. Come on. Here, you remember what he said? He said it right here in the text. He said, you need to go and you need to wait. Wait in Jerusalem. Had they took off, I'm telling you, their ship would have sunk. He said, go and wait. It was about obedience. Listen to me. And you're going to hear about this throughout this year. If you don't, and if I don't learn to walk in obedience to the Lord, you and I will experience nothing more than what our flesh can deliver. That's it. Trust and obey. Isn't that what the song says? Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. I understand that that may not be uh, flashy and, and get a lot of attention, but I'm telling you, you want to shrink, you want to shrink the Christian life down, the, the, the spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-anointed spirit life down, it's going to come down to that trust him, obey him. Without that, we're in trouble. Last one, and right before my five minutes, He doesn't give this power without giving us a purpose for what it's for. In the last verse I read there in verse 8, he said, and you will receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and here's what you do with it. And now you'll be witnesses unto me. Witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. 
Church, he, he, he's, not, he's not handing out his power so we can have a good time. He's not handing out his power to us so you and I can be the big kids on the block. He's not handing out his power to us so that we can strut around and say, oh, aren't we special? No, he gives his power out with one purpose in mind. Now go be witnesses. Go tell the world. Why? Because the world's going to hell without the gospel. I'm telling you, you go try to be a witness without the power of God on you, you're in trouble. Let me, let me make that even more personal. You go out here and try to work in the nursery without the power of God on you. Amen. You're in trouble. Why? You know your kids. Amen. Guarantee you half the parents in here would say, my kids are feral. It, it, listen, everything we do, because we often, we talk about the anointing of God. We talk about the power of God. It often just comes, well, we want our preacher to be anointed. Well, what about you? What about the ministry in which you're involved in? You also need the anointing of God. You also need the power of God on you. He didn't say this to preachers. He didn't say this to pastors. He didn't say this to prophets. He said this to people. People that would name Christ as Savior and Lord of their life need the power of God on you. No matter if you're a teacher, a preacher, a janitor, or a children's worker. Listen to me, the power of God's available to you. Available to you. We're going to hear all about that in this brand new year. I'm so excited to tell you about it. I'm so excited to experience it.